Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. Just building a new brand with my community. Okay, today's episode, I had to give you guys a trigger warning before this started because a lot of people that's been through these types of situations don't want to relive it. And a lot of people that, you know, don't know too much about it want to learn more about it so they don't have to get themselves in these situations. So this is going to be a full educational um, look at people's different point of views on sexual abuse and things that happen in their life that change who they are, some for the better, some for the worse. You guys let me know down below. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into it. And um, yeah, if you're new to this channel, you know to do this channel. Hurry up, subscribe, quick, quick, quick. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Hmm. The hardest challenge I've ever had to overcome, the obvious answer would be surviving sexual assault um, at 19, because it's it's been, it, it literally killed who I was. And I've had to, I can't even say rise from the ashes, because the ashes scattered. I had to recreate my soul. Likes are different, interests are different, fears are different. I have scars that you can see and scars, scars you can't see, but it took me a long time to, to be okay with the difference and stop mourning the person I was before. Every, I've been talking about being a rape survivor for 25 years because there's, there's the upside and there's the downside, you know, of telling my story because my story is, is different. You know, I was attacked by a stranger while I was at work at gunpoint. I was believed immediately and usually it's the absolute opposite for most survivors. I have to keep telling people that there is no one right way to be a rape survival. There's no one right way to disclose your truth. There's no one right way to seek justice. There's no one right way to healing. But people like to compare, never once considering that our world is set up to not believe survivors. Our world is set up to protect patriarchy and abusive people to teach other people who might be watching to shut up. We don't believe you. We will not prioritize you. So it is so important to show people there's another way. There's more, he there's healing out there. You will not be ostracized. There's a community that will wrap its arms, arms around you and protect you and hold you up. But sometimes it's hard to hear those messages through the noise and through reality. We believe you, we believe survivors, but actually what we really believe are Hollywood royalty, only Hollywood royalty, whose parents come from money, who are educated at the finest schools in the world. We are, we are prioritizing their voices and their stories, even in this movement, to show who we believe and what survivors should look like and sound like and, and, and whose stories are more real and valid. So. Yes, it's been 25 years and it'll be 25 more. As long as I have voice, I will be I will be telling my story and I'll be telling people how to get to the other side and find the light. But I'm also gonna be painfully honest about it's hard as shit. And the things our brains will do um, and our bodies will do to try to protect us can make that journey harder. And that's the truth. I was raped when I was 18 and I was sexually assaulted by two guys at the same time i woke up to it in the front yard of my dad's my dad saw and he blamed me i thought i was in a safe place because i was home my dad's always been like my hero growing up and he never asked me if i was okay and no one helped me and i felt like i'm in this journey all by myself and I'm not upset of the situation because I know that it does help other people, but I just felt like it was all on me. I use binging in a sense of like, one, well, I'm a type one diabetic. So I was binging and I was killing myself yeah. to the point where I almost died. And I didn't, I still to this point don't know how to not kill myself and get that grasp of food. And I knew that there was too much value within myself and my stories to 
put it into that and come here and do that. But that cloaked being is me in the parts of me that I never accepted. And it wasn't my fault that I attached to food for that vice and being alone. It was just what it was. Yeah. And I think that my the dark part of myself knew that that would be the thing to kill me. <laughs> I got a chance to hug myself and accept myself and release some of that anger of he just didn't know how to be a dad. He didn't know how to be in his courage. He was afraid to stand up for who he loved because someone was afraid to stand up for him. So it's an energy and you get to heal that. Very often we have goals that are attached to the healing and the helping of everybody in the world. I wanna tell you that I understand because for many, many, many years of my life, that was me. And I can tell you this because I went through this in the depths of my heart and soul. It's time for you to allow the rest of the world to rest. And it's time for you to work on healing you because we can never ever help the rest of the world if we don't first learn how to help ourselves. Oh, and did he catch you again when you were going to the bathroom? Yeah, okay. he did. And that's when he was he like- He caught me in the room. Okay. And that's when he was being very inappropriate. Yeah. And um, I guess we had been gone for a while and then my girl cousin came in the room and like stopped whatever it was that was happening. So she inter intervened actually. Yeah. And told me not to tell. She said not to tell anybody. And it's because it was her her brother. And I don't know if that was the reason. It was more so like we'll all get in trouble. Mm. Yeah, because you guys are small or like young. Hmm. Okay, and so because she said that to you. I didn't tell the school. You didn't tell anybody? No, I don't know why I was really good at keeping secrets mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was seven. But Well, and it felt like, did you feel like you were going to get in trouble too if you said something? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though, so you didn't, so at that age, there's a part of you that can't really process what's going on. So... I'm assuming that, you know, at seven, you know something didn't feel right, but because someone who's older told you if you say something will get in trouble and made you feel like you had done something wrong. I was sexually abused when I was eight years old by a man who was 25 years old. He led me to believe that what we were doing was something that I needed and that we must keep it a secret. When I was 27, I spoke out about what happened for the first time. I decided to report this man to the police but I couldn't prosecute due to the fact that I have no evidence. This made me want to go and confront him to his face and let him know that what he did will never be forgotten. So I found out where he lived and I knocked on his door to confront him. He answered, he called the police immediately, they arrived and I was arrested. He took me to court and prosecuted me for stalking, harassment and assault and I was found guilty. I now use my story to help raise awareness and bring attention to the problems that we face in prosecuting abusers. My name is Joni Indica. I want change and I won't stop. When I told my mom, that was like a different type of step that I took in life. I go outside and my mama turned around and she just hugged me. And she hugged me. She was like, I'm so, she was like, she was like, I'm sorry. And all she kept saying was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She hugged me. She was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, that was the first time I felt like somebody was actually sorry something happened to me. And she felt like she was like, it was all her fault. Like, she wish she would have had known her. Like, she felt like. She felt like it was some way, somehow, that she 
could have known that was happening. And and it wasn't. Like, she couldn't have known. I was sexually assaulted by a woman, and I have told no one up until this moment because I feel if I'll open up, no one will believe me, everyone will laugh at me, and no one will care. So to any guy who has dealt with sexual assault from anyone, I know the confusion, disgust, and shame that you're going through, and I want to let you know that you're not alone. They don't understand. Like, they don't understand what it's like to be assaulted, and they don't understand the feeling afterwards and the thing that you live with inside of you for so long. And so it, I'm really happy that you were able to take that time to understand that your reactions and the ways that you were coping were normal, right? And a lot of times we can be like, oh, well, like, I must be so fucked up. There must be something so wrong with me because I'm doing all of these things. But it's like, no, like, those reactions are normal. It was normal that you were putting yourself into similar situations because you wanted to almost rewrite your narrative, right? And it's really important that you have become so self-aware and you understand that and you're trying to now move into a place of more positive coping mechanisms and healing. And suddenly my relationship with my dad is about like what I look like and how I make him look um, as like arm candy. Um, but I loved it, you know? It was so hard for me to realize that those were like my favorite moments with my dad because I felt powerful and I felt, you know, I felt like people were looking at me in a way that where they were like in awe or jealous of me. Um, and I felt like, you know, in the way he would look at me with this sort of desire and, you know, put his hand on my lower back and move it down or kiss me on the cheek or kiss me on the lips and just say, you are beautiful. Everyone is watching you. Everyone is looking at you. And he would introduce me as, this is my girl, right? And that was the only time I ever heard that from my dad. And I grew up with my dad being pretty abusive, both, you know, sometimes in ways that could be misconstrued as loving, but also in ways where I felt pretty hated and resented by my dad. So these were moments where suddenly I didn't suspect that I was resented, but I felt like this is the moment where he would look at me and say, I love you. And he would say that in front of everyone, right? So these are just weird things that I used to do as a child and now have the understanding of why I used to do them. Not funny haha, -ha, but funny weird. So as a child, from as young as I can remember, like four or five years old, I used to think and wonder to myself when I had sleepovers, is my friend being molested or sexually abused by their daddy? Or any kind of adult figure generally male that was around them in their life and I used to be scared to get up to go toilet because I thought that something was going to happen to me. I also used to make my dinosaur which was an improvised Ken doll rape my one Barbie doll and then when I was finally like got my Ken dolls when I got older um or basically when my sister adopted me and she actually brought me toys. My mother never really brought me toys. I used to make my Barbies give my Ken dolls blowjobs at five. How the fuck did I know what a blowjob was? Um, and we used to do these like sex scenes. Me and my friends used to play with the Barbie dolls and make them have sex. That's kind of fucking weird. Another symptom that I experienced from my repressed memories was um, anytime that I was really extremely scared, I would experience genitalia arousal. Didn't understand why. And the arousal would feel like what you experience as arousal, but stabbing. So it felt like a since he's such a beautiful person and just having to go through all that it's just stabbing pain but arousal at the same time when i was extremely scared and also when i heard of like stories about other people being abused i would feel this sensation and i would always like try and like squeeze my legs together and make it like stop basically because it would always be in really uncomfortable situations or just it just made me uncomfortable because I didn't understand it right I also had this thing from can't remember what age I was when I learned what prostitution was but as soon as I heard what it was I wanted to be one I was extremely curious and I wanted to be one and I was young I want to say I was about 
eight or nine when I heard what a prostitute was because one of our extended family members, she was, had become a prostitute and my family was talking shit about her or whatever. I wanted to be one. Not only did I want to be one, I became one at the age of 16. The man in this photo is one of the worst sexual offenders in the history of Ohio. This man's name was Brian Peppers. For years, this photograph circulated on the internet attached to his story of sexual abuse, and nobody believed that it was real. But some fact-checking was eventually done, and yes, Brian Peppers was a real man with a real peppered past. So, Brian was born with something called Cruzon Syndrome. And when Brian was younger, he was bullied incessantly by people in his school. So, as Brian grew older over the years, his body quickly began to grow weaker, and eventually his mental health deteriorated to such a point that he had to be checked into a nursing home. But it was in the year 1998 when Brian was arrested and convicted of molesting somebody. According to the report, he actually sexually abused the nurse that was taking care of him in the nursing home. Brian was then removed from the nursing home, he spent 30 days in jail, and he was on probation for five years. After this incident, Brian was on the sex offenders registry in Ohio up until his death. When he died, Brian Peppers was only four foot one inches tall, and he passed away on February 7th, 2012. I got abused at summer camp, yeah? No one's gonna believe that I didn't like it. Do you know what I mean? A lot of men are being through this. How did it make I, you feel? It made me feel violated, bro. I don't know how to explain it. Bro, remember, I had just woke up to her. And she was there. Enjoying it. So what did she do? Enjoy, she was enjoying Kukumba and escorted it to her. Yes. She took it. She, she took control. Mm. Oh. She never put on a Jimmy. Oh, that's oh, crazy. Yeah. You should have reported it though, because that's mad. How? How do I go? But you was a as child. As a 15, 6 year old boy. Yeah, you was a child, bro. I'd be like, oh, that. But she was a grown woman now. She was a woman. Yeah, that's what you was a child. You back know. then, bro, all, you can imagine all your boys clowning you. Why are you mad? Yeah, they were the, yeah yo, no, they were, your boys back you in the days. You were definitely my boy. If Listen, I came to you now, we would have clowned have back then? in them days. Because man, they were like teenagers back then. To try and get some is like the ultimate goal. So now, finally, That's somebody and then you want to go and report it. They would, they would, they would, they would have cussed him. They would have gunned him out. They, that's what they, they would have gunned him. Just because my body gets aroused doesn't mean you wanted it. I wanted it, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because personally, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have done it with that person. Do you feel like there's, it's had any long-term sort of effect on you that you can say, you know what, I attribute certain things I do or certain way I think to that? I probably wouldn't be able to admit it anyway. That's what I'm trying but... to say to you, because you might say, yo, yeah, it hasn't, duh, 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 but you know like how you go to therapy and that, yeah? And then they bring these things out and then you probably don't know you do certain mm. things and they attribute it to that. You're like, oh, I'll be honest, down. Though, I'll yeah. be real. Growing up, this is going to sound moist, but I actually always wanted, because I'm one of 16, so I've got 15 siblings, yeah? I always grew up wanting to have a nuclear family. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> <laughs> no weapon, no weapon. A no nuclear. Man. Sorry, a nuclear family's mom, dad, yeah, kids, that, everyone's the, the, you know the, the whole the tradition, yeah, traditional yeah, kind traditional of family. family. Mm -hmm. So I genuinely didn't want to be that promiscuous you having sex with different people. I genuinely wanted So where, where did you stray? But I feel like after that situation It could have see, see after that situation, see? like sex was no longer it was no a longer. big deal mm. to me because bandits got violated and I couldn't tell nobody. Do you know what I'm saying? How long did it take you to open up about Excuse. it? I think like 10 years, 10, wow. 10, 10 years. Wow. And who was the first person you kind of spoke, spoke to about? My girl at the time. That's perfect. I, what was her reaction? What uh, made you want to tell her this? Well, I think we were just talking. She had been through something similar. And opened up. She opened up about her situation growing up. I was like, hey, also me. Yeah, yeah, I see what I, you mean. I'd been violated. Didn't she and created she, that space for you that yeah, felt to be, safe. Yeah, that, to you be know, safe. I can actually say this. And she was just, she couldn't believe it. She's like, you know what? If you had never told me this, I'd never believe it's possible for a guy to get violated mm. by a woman, do you know what I mean? Because everyone thinks in your head, if you're aroused, you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right, me, I'm right, so right, sensitive. Right. Yeah, even if you touch my knee, <laughs> I can stand to attention just now. <laughs> so, I'm not normal. Uh, I'm not normal. not normal. So, because you are guilty, aren't you? Are you guilty, sir? That my plea, exactly. Much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. 
You have done nothing to control those urges. Decision to assault was precise, calculated, manipulative, devious, despicable. I'm giving you 175 years, which is 2100 months. I've just signed your death warrant. I, I need everyone to be quiet. Okay. I don't want you guys to think I can unpack this within a couple of seconds, but what I could say, any types of abuse, physical, mental, especially sexual abuse, people don't understand that people carry this hurt, this trauma on for the rest of their life. And anything that can hurt you and cut you that deep is something that you really have to know how to heal and control before it controls you. So you're hurt. You have to know how to turn that around and make it a victory somewhere in some part of your life. I love you guys and you guys let me know down below, not if you have been through this experience, just if you feel the same way or what's your takes on, you know, people out there, there's a lot of cruel people in this world. That's why I say it's good versus evil. We just gotta stick together with good people and keep loving people around you. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, AKA Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.